to talk over that. I'll call the 3 p.m. session of the March 22nd, 2022 meeting of the Henry County Board of Supervisors to order. I'd like to welcome all of our visitors, remind you that if you want to address the board specifically, you must sign up seven days in advance of any of our regular meetings to be put on the agenda. The county administrator is the contact person for the board. However, the public may address the board under the agenda item matters presented by the public later in this meeting. Specifically, this afternoon, two have signed up under agenda item number six, and other matters presented by the public will be this evening under agenda item number 21. Again, welcome everyone. Thank you for coming out and participating in your county government. Our first item of business consideration is the items of consent, which is agenda item number five. What is the pleasure of the board? Mr. Chairman, I make a motion we approve the items of consent. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor? It is six zero. Uh, Jennifer. Agenda item number six, matters presented by the public. I will read a brief statement uh, prior to uh, asking those that have signed up uh, in advance. This is a time for public comment. We welcome your participation in today's meeting. We're here to listen to you. If you care to address the board, come to the podium, state your name, your subject matter, and the district in which you live. By coming to the podium, you have agreed that you will exhibit respect for the board its members and our staff. You will receive the same consideration from the board and staff. Please try to keep your presentation to between three to five minutes. I recognize Mr. Barker as being one that signed up today. Uh, um, Mr. Barker, come forward. We do have another that signed up, but I do not see him in the room. Well, first, I'd like to thank you for this opportunity. I am a patriot, and I do believe that the democratic process is the foundation of our country. And looking around the world, things are going on today. I am grateful to participate in the process. My name is Andrew Barker. I'm a farmer in Axton, Virginia. And uh, I've come here today to talk about new revenue opportunities for the county. Um, as a 66-year-old, I well remember where we were 40 years ago when inflation racked this area as much as it did, and now we're back in that ball game once again. So I am here to talk about not an absolutely new revenue opportunity. I'm here to talk about expanding that opportunity, and it regards solar energy in the Axton area. For way of disclosure, I am a farmer. I own three tracts of land that I do have an option on with the Vesper Group to be developed. Uh, however, I will tell you that is not the all ends answer. I have one tract that is so small and irregular shape that it has already been cast aside as far as the engineers for Vesper is concerned. I have another tract that is right on the slope margin and is unlikely to be developed. And the third track with a pond pretty close to the center of that property and a creek that runs from it, less than 50% of that land would be available after the buffer zones and that water area is taken out. So you know where I stand, and obviously I'm encouraged to do it or I would not have signed an option. Uh, I come here today as a lifelong county resident. I've always been interested in county government. I've never been here to tell you what you were doing wrong. I've told some of you what I thought you could do to improve things along the way. But this will only be the third time in my career, 45 years worth, that I've been here to talk about something that I felt needed to be discussed. The issue at hand is the 2.5% uh, density rating or ratio that you recently voted on to uh, restrict solar development to 2.5% of the land in a five mile radius. I really can't say I completely understand how it will be calculated. I understand how math works, however. And um, I'd like to uh, just say that I would appreciate it and recommend that you consider changing this to 5%. I don't think it will necessarily double the amount of land that's developed using my own three tracks as an example. There are physical and topography uh, limitations to what will be developed. Uh, I do believe it, the development is a good thing for the area. It's a good alternative for that land. You will certainly make more property taxes off of it than what it is now generating as a farm. 
and I, uh, I, want, I want to encourage this as a future for the county. Um, uh, add some anecdotal evidence. Um, today at lunchtime, I read one of my farm periodicals that come on a pretty regular basis to my house. I probably have about 40 subscriptions. Uh, the editor of this particular magazine is well noted for being factual and is well noted for being on point. And since we're about to get to April, he's normally talking about planting season, cost of inputs, where the market is, what the weather's doing, and what Washington is doing to help us or hurt us. Uh, today, it was a very thought-provoking article as I thought about what I was going to say at this meeting, simply because he talked about the ratio of proxy statements delivered by new corporations in the United States that uh, have sustainability in their mission statements and listed in their proxy declarations. And this is not necessarily something new for the nation, but as we move forward, we are talking more about sustainability. We're talking more about recycling, and of course, we're talking more about clean energy. Um, in his article, he talked about that 80% of that proxy information from last year used the word sustainability as they released their statements. And you know, I believe it would be awfully nice for Henry County to be able to brag on its green energy operation and at the same time attract some of those companies here to provide employment for our citizens. They're going to have processing and manufacturing opportunities somewhere. They may as well be here. I'd also like to talk just a moment on technology. This is new technology. I believe as these solar farms are developed and maintained, the panels will be replaced to ones that are more efficient down the road, and I think they will make an impact in our total energy production in the nation, and uh, I think they will obviously make an impact on emissions. Uh, when this thing started, I went to North Carolina and visited some friends of mine who had solar opportunities down there. I talked with them. They felt comfortable about it. Their neighbors were gung-ho and in on the deal, so to speak, and uh, they, those, some of those uh, solar farms down there are now three or four years in operation, and and you know have good reports to make so i believe we can do the same um you know as a farmer who is 66 years old i've seen a lot of changes in technology and uh, i believe we have great heritage in henry county i believe we have great people i believe we have great land mass we have water we have good climate and we have location 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 there's no reason for us not to build on this heritage i believe we can market our opportunity of solar energy production as a win-win and uh, attract some of these companies. None of this happens by accident. I fully understand that and I just share with you briefly how I've seen technology change. Are you close to wrapping I up because I've, I've let you go a little longer I appreciate than, that. than state? Anyway, as a youngster, I remember my dad explaining to me why some people were still cultivating with horses and mules when everybody else had tractors. And it was because it was still a viable alternative because they didn't have good herbicides. Today, because of technology, farmers can get a call on their cell phone from an autonomous tractor that's wanting to know the GPS coordinates of the next field to go to because it's finished up where it is. This technology didn't happen because planners said no. It didn't happen because adopters didn't accept the, and use those products. And I think it's time for us to say yes. I believe this is a good deal for the future. And I appreciate your consideration in changing that um, density rule. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you, Mr. Barker. Thank you. Uh, as I mentioned before, we did have someone else uh, sign up under matters presented by the public in advance of this meeting. I do not see them in the room, so we will move on to agenda item number seven. Ms. Buchanan, I believe that you have a proclamation for the board's consideration. Yes, Mr. Chairman. This is a proclamation of the Henry County Board of Supervisors. This is recognizing National Library Week and National Library Workers Day. Whereas, the Blue Ridge Regional Library <clears throat> provides our community members with the transforming knowledge and information 
they need to live, learn, and work in the 21st century. And whereas the five libraries and Bookmobile provide free in-person and electronic access to books, materials, and services, which provide education, engagement, and enrichment to community members of all ages. And whereas during the pandemic, the flexible and creative staff of the libraries added curbside service, expanded online services, virtual programming, drive-by seasonal events, social services, health support services, and boosted the library branch Wi-Fi to provide internet access in their parking lots. And whereas the Blue Ridge Regional Library was awarded a certificate of appreciation in April of 2021 by Visit Martinsville for outstanding creation of engaging content, including offering adaptable services, reflecting its dedication to showcasing quality content in Martinsville and Henry County. And whereas our library system remains a vital partner to many community organizations for youth and adults with the branches serving as safe, welcoming and inclusive community centers. And whereas the library fosters a love of reading in partnership with daycare centers and the three school systems, especially through the annual summer reading program. And whereas library professionals and staff play a critical role in providing daily help to meet the needs of our community, offering proven exceptional service. Now therefore, be it proclaimed that the Henry County Board of Supervisors recognizes April 3rd through 9th, 2022 as National Library Week and Tuesday, April 5th, as National Library Workers Day. Furthermore, the board encourages everyone in Henry County to take advantage of the variety of library resources available and to thank library workers for their exceptional contribution to our quality of life. And this is signed by Jim Adams, Chairman of the Henry County Board of Supervisors. Mr. Chairman, I move that the board adopt this proclamation. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor? It is 6-0, Jennifer. Um, Ms. Buchanan, if you and Vice Chairman uh, uh, Bryant will uh, present this on behalf of the uh, board uh, to members of the library who will uh, come forward to receive this. <coughs> Thank you. Um, the board has as part of its uh, background uh, documents in regard to what we would normally have as a report from uh, County Treasurer Scott Grindstaff, who is unable to be here. So we're actually skipping uh, agenda item number eight, as well as uh, the board will be provided an update on the uh, Economic Development uh, Corporation later today uh, by county staff. That takes us to agenda item number 10, financial matters. 10A, an additional appropriation referencing Virginia school screening testing for assurance program for the school board. Mr. Hall. The school board requests that the board of supervisors approve an additional appropriation of $300,000 received from the Virginia Department of Health's Virginia school screening testing for assurance program. The funds will be used for expenses related to testing and ensuring the communication of public health 
recommended isolation and quarantine protocol, responding to school needs, and assisting with the facilitation of answers to parents and school community regarding COVID-19 testing and symptoms needed. Uh, Ms. Strayer is in the room along with Dr. Bowen. Should you have any questions? Hey, the board has had an opportunity to review the background material on this. What is the pleasure of board in regard to approval of the appropriation? Mr. Chairman, I move the board approve the appropriation of 300000 as noted. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor? It's 6 0, Jennifer. 10B, an additional appropriation referencing Virginia Business Ready Sites Program Grant for the Commonwealth Crossing Business Center. Mr. Hall. Staff requests that the board approve an appropriation of $1,036,250 from the Virginia Business Ready Sites Program of the Virginia Economic Development Partnership for site work on Lot 2 at Commonwealth Crossing Business Center. The funds will be used to clear the timber from the site and <coughs> prepare grading design plans. Okay. With that, uh, what is the pleasure of the board in regard to this uh, appropriation? Mr. Chairman, I make a recommendation of approving the appropriation of $1,036,250 received from the VEDP for site work at the CCBC. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor? It's 6 0, Jennifer. 10 C, an additional appropriation referencing. Virginia Tobacco Commission Grant for Commonwealth Crossing Business Center. Mr. Hall. Staff requests that the board approve an appropriation of $357,741 received from the Virginia Tobacco Commission for site work on Lot 5 at CCBC. The funds will be used for grading and development of that lot. The board may not be as, as familiar with that lot as is the others. Lot 5 is the small lot to the left, just as you go into the park and cross over the state line. We think we can get about a seven acre pad out of that and it'll give us some some variety of what we can offer perhaps mixed use or uh, something on a smaller scale that could enhance the park with that what is the uh, pleasure of the board in regard to approval of the appropriation received from the virginia tobacco commission mr chairman may the board approve the appropriation of three hundred fifty seven thousand seven hundred forty one dollars received from the virginia tobacco commission for site work at CCBC. <clears throat> we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor? It's 6 0, uh, Jennifer. 10 D, an award of contract referencing <clears throat> the Emergency Medical Services Billing Services for Public Safety. Mr. Hall. Public Safety Director Matt Tatum asked the board to award a contract to EMS Management and Consultants Incorporated of Winston, <coughs> North Carolina. Emergency Medical Services Billing Services. EMS Management and Consultants has served as the billing agent for ambulance transports handled by the Department of Public Safety and our five volunteer rescue squads under an existing contract for the past five years. The contract award is based on RFP number 20 from James City County, Virginia, and pricing is based on a percentage of collections. Staff estimates that will be approximately $42,000 annually. And I believe Mr. Taylor, Mr. Tatum is here, should you have any questions? Okay, uh, the board also has had an opportunity to review the background material on this. Uh, what is the board's uh, <coughs> pleasure in regard to awarding of this contract? Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we award the contract to EMS Management and Consultants for EMS Building Services. <coughs> second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor? is 6-0, Jennifer. Uh, the board has in front of it uh, 10E background material that was uh, placed uh, at your uh, desk uh, prior to this meeting. Uh, 10E, an additional appropriation and award of contract referencing roof replacement for parks and rec. Mr. Hall. The board allocated capital funds in FY22 to replace the roof on the Henry County Recreation Center. This is the former Collinsville YMCA. However, the amount of funding was insufficient to start the project due to the rapidly escalating labor and material costs. The project still has considerable merit even with these increased costs. Therefore, staff is asking the board to consider an additional appropriation from its contingency fund of $50,000 
and carryover funds of $364,993 to move forward with this project. Subsequent to the additional appropriation, staff also asked the board to award a contract of $567,000 to J.T. Morgan Roofing Incorporated of Roanoke to replace the roof. As I recall, uh, our contingency fund after the February meeting was 63000 mm -hmm. approximately. Is that correct? Okay. So again, we're, we will be pulling 50 from that. What is uh, the board's uh, desire in regard to uh, this uh, additional appropriation? <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, I move the board approve the additional appropriation totaling $414,993 from the contingency and carryover funds and to award the contract of $567,000 to J.T. Morgan Roofing Incorporated for the replacement of the roof. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor? It's 6-0. Uh, Jennifer. Um, we have one other financial item um, that um, after the board met with uh, the school board uh, to see some of their budget desires um, recently. Each board member had an opportunity to talk one-on-one -on -one with their respective uh, counterpart on the school board. Um, having said that, um, Mr. Bryan, I think that you may have a motion for the board's consideration. <clears throat> yes, sir, I do, Mr. Chairman. I'd make a motion to allocate 100% of the 1% sales tax revenue to the future construction, renovation, and improvements for school facilities. Replace $2.6 million in the budget previously appropriated for school debt from general funds, reserve funds, and to set, pub and to set a public hearing for April the 26th at 6 p.m. as required when amending the budget by more than 1%. Second. Second. We have we have a motion and multiple seconds. Any discussion? All in favor? It's 6-0, Jennifer. Agenda item number 11, the consideration of an ordinance creating a tourism zone. Uh, the board has a substantial amount of background material, I think nine or 10 pages. Mr. Hall. Staff requested the board consider creating a tourism zone in Henry County to help recruit tourism-related businesses. Much like our traditional industry enterprise zones, a tourism zone allows businesses to take advantage of state and local tax incentives not available to businesses elsewhere. These incentives aim to stimulate business attraction, growth, and increase employment opportunities within the county. Staff recommends that Henry County's tourism zone mirror the areas of the county zoned as commercial B1. To be eligible for incentives similar to the enterprise zone incentives, the tourism-related business would have to make new capital investment of at least $500,000 and create at least new five new full-time jobs. A public hearing is required before adopting an ordinance creating the tourism zone. What is the board's desire in regard to setting a public hearing? Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we set a public hearing to receive uh, citizen input at our April 26th meeting at 6 p.m. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Is uh, six zero, uh, Jennifer. Uh, agenda item number twelve. Informational items. We will uh, begin by taking uh, comments from the board, beginning with uh, Mr. Zayer. No, sir. Uh, Mr. Dillard. No, sir. Mr. Bryant. No, sir. Ms. Buchanan. Yes, sir. I just want to make uh, the public aware that I will be holding a another horse pasture district community meeting on Tuesday, April the 12th at 6 p.m. at the uh, Horse Pasture Ruiton building. Uh, County Administrator Tim Hall will be there. Uh, I believe possibly our Deputy County Administrator will be there. No, we're dragging them. You're back dragging, okay. <laughs> uh, Sheriff Lane Perry will be there, uh, as well as Lisa Hughes with VDOT. And I would encourage anybody that lives in the Horse Pasture district to come out. Great. Mr. Slaughter. No, sir. Uh, the board has in front of it, uh, and this may be covered by Mr. Hall, a proposed uh, budget calendar uh, alteration. Mm -hmm. Mr. Hall, would you comment on this, please? Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, given the lack of decisiveness uh, from the General Assembly, uh, they adjourned a couple of weeks ago, and apparently the two budget committees have not even met since they adjourned. Uh, 
that puts us in a difficult position to try to craft a, an accurate budget. So what you have in front of you and what we're asking you to vote on to approve, this essentially moves out our budget calendar for two weeks to give us some more time to make it more fact-based as opposed to guest-based. Um, the only change other than moving some of the dates out is that we have on here, we traditionally schedule one work session and give you verbiage that we can have a second one if you're ready for it or if you need it. But we have put two work sessions into this calendar and if all you need is one, then we can cancel the second one. But I wanted, since we're, we're shrinking the window here, I wanted to make sure it would be on everyone's calendar should you want additional work sessions as we get through the budget. Um, this doesn't uh, hurt us or put us in risk from the code. We're still meeting all advertising requirements, all approval requirements. Uh, but we just feel like as a staff, uh, we need more time uh, to put together a budget that we can stand behind just because of the lack of action. Uh, Richmond has kind of put us in a little bit of a, a quandary. Okay. Yeah. Uh, obviously, uh, each of you will need to review your uh, personal calendars and make sure you pencil these in. I'll ask uh, staff and or uh, someone communicating this well in advance of yes. these dates since they have changed a, a little bit. And if, if you wish to take some time to check your calendars, we can take action on this at some other point today or tonight. If you want to take some time, or if you're ready to move on, we're ready to move on. It's actually better for me, so. Everyone seem to be able to make these work. Okay. Um, I'll need a, a motion and a second in the board vote to uh, alter this. I'll make so, a motion, uh, Mr. Chairman, that we alter the uh, budget calendar this 2022-2023 uh, as posted here. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor? is 6-0, Jennifer. I have one item before passing it off to Mr. Hall. Um, in the past, uh, the board has uh, done some early outs, uh, whatever, last year, uh, in consideration of a lot of what the staff went through, each department, and likewise, uh, going from spring of last year, even up until the point where we are uh, now. Uh, Mr. Hall, could you all make it work if the board authorized Good Friday off. Well, I, I'm sure we can make it work. Yes, sir. Really? <laughs> okay. I will need a motion from the board. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second that we allow county staff and PSA staff, uh, assuming that they concur, uh, April 15th, which is Good Friday, off. Okay. All in favor? Six zero, Jennifer. Uh, okay, Mr. Hall. Uh, yes, sir, I've got a couple of items for you, some dates uh, to also get on your calendar. And I'll try to go in chronological order here, but I'm going to figure out the You may have seen this in the newspaper today. Uh, American Electric Power is going to um, do some extensive upgrades in our area over the next several years. Mm -hmm. uh, about 22 miles of rehab lines and new lines, taking two substations out of order rehabbing one, building a completely new substation. And they're gonna start their public outreach uh, on March the 29th. Uh, that will be an open information session and we call the Bassett Train Depot. Uh, that'll be from 5 to 7.30. Um, this will be a multiple year project, but the AP gets out in front of, of their projects well, so this will be the first chance to see some diagrams and some drawings. Mr. Wagner and I, um, sat through a, a Zoom briefing on this, and it is an extensive project that uh, will take a while and, and will have some positive impact on the power supply in our area. Excuse me, Mr. Hall, what time was that? Uh, yeah. April 29th, 5 to 7 30 at seven. the train depot. April or March? April. April. I'm April. sorry, March. Okay. So I'm always ahead of myself. Okay. March the 29th, 5 to 7 30. All right. Um, leaping into April. Um, you may have gotten an email about the uh, Virginia Association of County Supervisors Forum. It's in every other year event where they train or you're eligible to come and get some training from Vaco. Um, that has been canceled. Apparently, there are, have, since they canceled it, there have been other emails coming out that say that it's not canceled. I don't know what Vaco's doing. Maybe someone's, uh, maybe the Russians have gotten in their mm -hmm. emails. I don't know. 
Uh, but it, it is canceled. It was scheduled for April 29th and 30th. So that is off. Uh, if you had any uh, idea. And that, that's off for the year. Yes, it's off this year. Off this year. They will re okay. they'll resume their normal schedule. Next year. Um, April 23rd is the uh, spring date for the household hazardous waste day. Mm -hmm. That's a Saturday. And like uh, normal, that'll be at the Henry County Service Center off the of Ferris Home Park Highway. And the hours will be from 9 to 12. So that's on April the 23rd. And then finally, um, it's been at least, I think it's been two years since we had an employee recognition banquet. Uh, we're getting back on the saddle this year. Uh, and that is scheduled for May the 12th uh, at 6 p.m. at NCI. And you will get an invitation to this, but I wanted to take advantage of perhaps getting it on the calendar. Uh, again, May the 12th, it's a Thursday, 6 p.m. at NCI. So we'll follow up with more details on that. And I believe that's it. Okay, uh, since we're covering dates, uh, Mr. Tatum. Uh, I know that you and I had a discussion as to what the public safety uh, appreciation day was going to be. Uh, would June you share? 11th. Would you share that, please? Yes, June the 11th at Jack Dalton Park, and it's going to be like a picnic family fun day style. Okay. All right. Thank you, okay, Mr. Chairman. What time is that? I don't have the exact time. I think it's going to be about 10 a.m. But I'll let you know the exact time. But it's June the 11th. Okay, thank you for those informational items. Uh, with that, it takes us to agenda item 13. If uh, someone will cite the uh, Code of Virginia uh, allowed by the Freedom of Information Act that allows us to hold a closed meeting. Mr. Chairman, I move the board convene and closed meeting as permitted under the following sections of the Virginia Freedom of Information Act 2.237.11A1 for discussion of appointees to the Henry Martinsville Department of Social Services, 2.237.11A7 for discussion of pending legal matters, 2.237.11A3 for discussion of the acquisition disposal of real estate, and 2.237.11A5 for discussion of as yet unannounced industries. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? It is 6-0, Jennifer. I'll see you all upstairs in five minutes. Close meeting on a motion by Ms. Buchanan, a second by Mr. Slaughter. Uh, Mr. Wagner, will you poll the board? Do you verify that in closed session, we've public business matters, possibly exempted, and have identified in the motion to go on the closed Mr. Zayer. Yes, sir. Mr. Geller. Yes, sir. Mr. Wright. Yes, sir. Mr. Slaughter. Yes, sir. Mr. Slaughter. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I will declare a recess until our 6 p.m. meeting. Afternoon session. I'd like to welcome all of our guests here tonight. Uh, it's been a long time since we've had a full room here, and it's uh, good to see you all out and uh, coming out to participate in what your county government uh, is doing. Again, welcome everyone. Uh, if you want to address the board uh, at any of the meeting, you need to sign up seven days in advance of a, uh, of a meeting to be put on the agenda. The county administrator is contact person for the board. However, the public may address the board under the agenda item matters presented by the public uh, later in this meeting, and that's agenda item number 21. Again, welcome everyone. Our first item of consideration uh, tonight is agenda item uh, 14, consideration of a proclamation recognizing the 75th anniversary of the Martinsville Speedway. Mr. Hall. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm going to ask Mr. Martin if he can go over to the uh, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Martinsville Speedway held its first race on September 7th, 1947, and it continues to host NASCAR sanctioned Cup Series races every year since. Martinsville Speedway is an economic engine for our area, while also enhancing quality of life in Henry County and the region. Staff has prepared a proclamation <coughs> recognizing the 75th anniversary of Martinsville Speedway for the board's consideration. And in addition, staff has worked on a new temporary Henry County logo that incorporates this anniversary. This temporary logo will be used in our marketing efforts. Uh, Clay Campbell with Marshall Speedway will attend tonight's meeting and will accept the proclamation. 
And then we have just uh, unveiled officially the temporary new logo that Henry County will use uh, in honor and recognition of the Speedway 75th anniversary. Mr. Zayer, I believe that you have a proclamation uh, for the board's consideration. Yes, Mr. Chairman. This is a proclamation of the Henry County Board of Supervisors, 75th anniversary of Martinsville Speedway. Whereas Martinsville Speedway held its first race on September 7th, 1947, three months prior to the creation of NASCAR to a crowd of 9,013 fans on its original dirt track. And whereas Martinsville Speedway is the only NASCAR track to host Cup Series races every year since the league's inception in 1949. And whereas the foresight and commitment to community by men like H. Clay Earls and Clay Campbell has afforded the residents of Martinsville, Henry County with priceless memories shared by generations of race lovers. And whereas Memories of Martinsville Speedway extend beyond the bounds of the sport, capturing the minds of those driven by charitable action through food box distribution or through the donation of toys to children in need. And whereas Martinsville Speedway served as a valuable partner throughout the coronavirus pandemic, graciously allowing its facilities to be used for the betterment of public health. And whereas Martinsville Speedway remains an economic engine for our area, spurring tourism annually and bolstering its neighboring industries and businesses. And whereas through the contributions, Martinsville Speedway has given a new meaning to its moniker, the paperclip, as it continues to help bind our community together. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed on this 22nd day of March, 2022, that the Henry County Board of Supervisors <coughs> congratulates Martinsville Speedway on its 75th anniversary and encourages all local citizens to join in the year-long celebration of the institution which has contributed so much to our community. Signed, Jim Adams, Chairman, Henry County Board of Supervisors. Mr. Chairman, maybe we approve this proclamation. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? It is 6-0, uh, Jennifer. Um, Mr. Zayer, I'm going to ask if uh, you and uh, Ms. Buchanan would represent the uh, board in uh, presenting this tonight. Thank you very much for this. It's, uh, it's quite an honor and, you know, 75 years of anything, any business or anything of the sort is, is amazing. So this is a great year for us. Uh, we're looking forward to a lot of, a lot of good things. It, we're going to have a, a great year with things trending the way they are for a couple of weeks. It should be the largest crowd we've ever had here. <coughs> Excuse me. So we're anticipating a good weekend for that one, and as well the one in the fall, which is the penultimate race before the championship. So we're in a good spot with NASCAR. I couldn't be more proud to be a citizen and a business in Henry County. Uh, thank you all for the contributions you have, the contributions and the, and the collaboration that we have had over the years. Thanks to the citizens of Henry County, we employ a lot of people on race weekend, and we couldn't do it without the support of, of the people of Henry County, public safety, and on and on and on. So it, it's a great partnership. I thank you so much for this award, and uh, it's, it's quite an honor, so I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Agenda item number 15, the consideration of a proclamation establishing March 2022 as Multiple Sclerosis Education and Awareness Month. Uh, Mr. Dillon, I believe you have a proclamation for the board's consideration. Yes, sir. This proclamation is established in March 2022 as Multiple Sclerosis Education and Awareness Month, whereas multiple sclerosis is a chronic, often disabling disease of the central nervous system that affects approximately a million people in the United States. 
and whereas it typically strikes young adults between the ages of 20 and 40 while in the prime of their life, and women are more likely to have multiple sclerosis by the age of 30, and whereas the need exists for better education and awareness of multiple sclerosis, helping its victims lead more productive and satisfying lives to benefit themselves, their caregivers and families, and the overall community. And whereas the exact cause of multiple sclerosis is still unknown and there is no known cure, and whereas the symptoms of MS may be mild, such as numbness in the limbs, or severe, such as paralysis or loss of vision, and whereas the Blue Ridge chapter of the National Multiple Sclerosis Society provides programs and services to address the challenges of everyone affected by MS, now therefore be it proclaimed that the Henry County Board of Supervisors hereby establishes March 2022 as Multiple Sclerosis Education and Awareness Month in Henry County, and we urge our citizens to recognize this action. And this is signed by our chairman, Jim Adams, and I would like to present this to the board um, as a motion to be approved and to make March 2022 National Multiple Sclerosis Education and Awareness Month. Second. Second. Well, motion is second. All in favor is 6 0. Jennifer, do we have uh, Angie Fidel uh, here with us tonight? Um, I apologize. I don't recognize uh, or anyone from the MS Society here. Uh, well, we were going to present that to them tonight. We will make sure that they uh, actually get this proclamation. But uh, and, and should they arrive later uh, in this meeting, uh, we will do so. That takes us to agenda item uh, number 16, uh, uh, Parks and Rec uh, presentation. We have with us uh, tonight our Assistant Director of uh, Parks and Recreation, uh, Mr. Reynolds. Mr. Reynolds, you want to come forward and sort of uh, lead us into this? So we just finished up our winter sports season, which consists of boys basketball and girls volleyball. Uh, we have junior basketball, which is for eight, nine, and 10 year olds. We have senior basketball, which is for 11, 12, and 13. And we have volleyball, which is for 11, 12, and 13. We do appreciate the opportunity to bring in our tournament champs and let them get some recognition. Uh, with that being said, we'll start with our junior league champs, the team from Mount Olivet, coached by Alexei Harrison and Derek Harrison. Um, we have 13 teams in the league this year, and they finished with a perfect 12 and 0 record. Next up is our Senior Basketball League, and we had FC4 win the tournament championship. We had nine teams in the league that finished with a record of 6-2 and two and then won the tournament. So come on up, man.
<clears throat> and for our girls volleyball league, uh, we have Ricky Smith, the coach. Uh, there was six teams in the league, and Law Park Two finished with a perfect 10 and 0 record. Thank you, uh, team members, coaches. Uh, you are what helps to make a vibrant community uh, involvement, not only within the uh, youth uh, programs, but the uh, spirit that it carries throughout uh, the community. And sometimes even those that know very little about the sport itself uh, are engaged because, quite frankly, children, grandchildren, relatives, neighbors, they're involved. So it, uh, it does bring a, a sense of community together, and I'd like to personally thank uh, Mr. Dillard on the board here for uh, actually sort of getting behind this to make sure that we recognize. Mr. Dillard, thank you. <laughs> now, as anxious as I know that you all are to get on uh, the courts and the fields and, and all and play, I know that you're probably equally as anxious to go home and do homework. <laughs> uh, if you choose to leave the meeting, please do so quietly and respectfully because we, we do have a number of other things. But uh, again, thank you for being here tonight. So if you choose to leave, please do so quietly. With that, uh, we will uh, now take up agenda item number 17, general highway matters. We have with us Lisa Hughes uh, from VDOT. Lisa. <laughs> and Lisa, I apologize, we don't have a trophy for you tonight. Would you like me to cover my items? First, uh, I, I have several, and I know you've got a resolution for us. Uh, the spring transportation meeting, that's for the Salem District, that's going to be held on uh, May 24th at 4 p.m. at the Holiday Inn Valley View. And also, our secondary six-year plan public hearing, that'll be this uh, next month, April 26th. We'll have it at our usual time. Uh, for the this board meeting. Uh, just some updates on projects really quickly. Uh, work begins on the safety project I've told you about on 220 South that goes from uh, Lee Fork Camp Road down the Carolina line. Southbound Lane will be rebuilding shoulders and adding rumble strips and upgrading the guard rail. Uh, slurry seal, we're ready to get that started. Uh, supposed to start April 4th. A lot of the patching you see in Collinsville on the west side of 220, we'll be getting all those roads and several of the lower volume roads off of Figsboro Road, off of 108. Uh, we're doing some bridge painting on 58 East over Leatherwood Creek. Um, we're doing some on the bridge on BC Drive and also TB Stanley Highway. And the last thing I have, our smart scale, this is our year for our smart scale applications and the period will look pre-application period runs until April 1st and we have been working with Mr. Clark on getting the project submitted. We'll be resubmitting our county wheel uh, 220 North, some improvements to the northbound lane at Oak Level. Uh, Bears Mill Road is a new project that we, that the county's going to, uh, you all are going to submit and also the improvements to 220 and 87. So that's all I have. Does anyone have anything for Lisa before we consider 17A? Lisa, these 
trees that are laying on the side of the road stuck out right close to the edge of the pavement. Are y'all going to try to do anything about those? And Any particular area? Well, I know down on 457 between Terry Mountain and okay. my road, there's one. And I said something to David about one of them, Cola Road, right there at the overpass, underpass. It's laying on the guardrail and stuck out about four or five feet. And when you come around that curve, you know, if somebody gets over too much, they're going to get right through the windshield, I think. So uh, I think we've, we've got that scheduled to trim, but okay. I'm not sure we'll get that done. Any other items? 17A is a consideration of a resolution supporting the addition of Buckingham Terrace to the secondary road system. Mr. Hall. Buckingham Terrace is located in the Farmingdale subdivision. It meets the public service criteria of the subdivision street requirements to be a part of the Virginia Department of Transportation's secondary road system. Therefore, as an administrative matter, the board must pass that resolution asking the Virginia Department of Transportation to accept the new road into the secondary road system. Mr. Zaire, I believe this is in your district. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, I move the board approve the uh, attached resolution. Second. <clears throat> we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor? It's 6-0, uh, Jennifer. Agenda item number 18, a public hearing, a rezoning application, R-22-04, Gregory L. and Ann M. Benton. We have with us tonight our uh, Director of Planning and Zoning, Mr. Lee Clark. Mr. Clark. Yeah, this property is located at 902 Eggleston Falls Road. It's in the Ridgeway District. Tax map numbers are 62384F, J, K, and L. The applicant is requesting a rezoning of approximately 3.4 acres from suburban residential district to agricultural district A1, and the applicant wishes to build additional accessory buildings on the property. Following public hearing, both the planning commission and staff recommended approval of this request. I'll open the public hearing to take any input on this at 619. Is there anyone wishing to address the uh, board on this uh, rezoning application? Seeing and hearing no indication of such, I will close a public hearing at uh, 619. Mr. Zare, I believe also this is in your district. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, will the board approve the rezoning request? Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor is 6-0, uh, Jennifer. Agenda item number 19, public hearing, uh, Fieldale Heritage Revitalization. Mr. Hall. As part of the grant process for an application to the Virginia Department of Housing and Community Development, the board must hold a public hearing to allow citizens the opportunity to comment on the Community Development Block Grant proposal to be submitted for the Fieldville Heritage Revitalization Project. This required second public hearing has been properly advertised and scheduled for tonight's meeting. Staff is asking for the board to approve a resolution in support of the application. And if it is funded, the grant will provide up to $1 million toward the project. I will open the public hearing at 620 to take any input on this. Is there anyone wishing to address the board on this public hearing? Seeing and hearing no indication of such, I will close the public hearing at 621. Uh, Ms. Buchanan, I believe this is in your district. It is, uh, Mr. Chairman, and certainly the uh the staff here and uh, the residents have been working very hard on the revitalization of Fieldale, and it's, <coughs> you can noticeably see that. And uh, I would certainly recommend that the board approve the resolution in regard uh, to the support of the uh, CDBG grant. Second. second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor? It is 6-0, Jennifer. Agenda item number 20, a public hearing on magisterial redistricting. Mr. Hall. Last month, the redistricting committee presented its recommendations, recommendations for changes to the magisterial districts to meet the requirements of Article 7, Section 5 of the Virginia Constitution that requires magisterial districts to be reapportioned every 10 years following the release of the decennial census. This process aims to balance the representative population of each district to within 5% of the median. A public hearing is set for tonight to receive citizen input on these proposed changes. 
and you have in your working papers the presentation that you saw last month and it's been available since then for public uh, viewing. <laughs> I will open the public hearing at 622 to take any input on this. Is there anyone wishing uh, to speak uh, in regard to this public hearing on the magisterial district changes? Seeing and uh, hearing no indication as such, uh, what is the pleasure of the board? Mr. Chairman, I'd make a motion that we approve the change in the magisterial districts uh, as proposed by the committee. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor? It's six zero, Jennifer. And with that, I'd like to thank those from the uh, uh, electoral board as well as the county registrar for being here tonight in su support of this in case we had any questions uh, uh, in regard to it. So thank you all for being here. That takes us to agenda item number 21, matters presented by the public. Is there anyone wishing to address the board tonight under matters presented by the public? I see a few hands uh, and I have a brief policy statement to read and uh, then we'll uh, take them one at a time. This is a time for public comment. We welcome your participation in tonight's meeting. We're here to listen to you. If you care to uh, address the board, come to the podium, state your name, your subject matter, and the district in which you live. By coming to the podium, you've agreed that you will exhibit respect for the board, staff, and its members. The members of the board and staff are committing to giving you the same consideration. Uh, please keep your uh, presentation uh, to about three minutes. I saw multiple hands, and I'm going to start with this gentleman right here. I saw you uh, uh, out of one eye, and then I saw <coughs> some across the room over there. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen of the board. Uh, my name is Andrew Hines. I live in the Iris Wood District. Mr. Dillard is my supervisor. I reached out to him earlier in the last few weeks because one of the things that the school district does is they send home the budget with your children. You do that via email. And as a concerned parent, I decided to read through it idly one day around Christmas and stumbled across a gem. This is for last year's 2022 approved school board budget that really stuck out to me. And especially in light of all the children who are here today who are competing in our different county sports, the vast majority of which were taking place at our different public schools, many of which are sorely in need of capital improvements. Uh, on page 17, there's a year by year statement of the different funding sources for the school district and the school board. And every year, it seems that Henry County drops a little further in those rankings. To the point that in 2020, out of 132 different school divisions here in Virginia, we are number 131. Now, as much as I love being in the bottom 1.5% of Virginia school districts for locality funding, I would urge the board to consider when thrift turns to penury. When we stop investing into the futures of our children, and into the different places that they educate themselves, the different opportunities to avail themselves of, we give up on their futures. And when we do that, we can say goodbye to the economic development. We can say goodbye to new, better roads. We can say goodbye to many of the different things that we count as cornerstones of our life here in Henry County. I have two children here, I have friends in the education system, and I can tell you that being that low in a state of 132 different districts. It's devastating to the morale of the teachers, and they are already stretched to the breaking point. The last two years into the pandemic have been horrible for everyone, but especially for families. I know that my wife and I have struggled to find ways to care for our children. My job didn't stop. I'm a necessary employee. I went to work every day. Where did I put my children? I had a high school student come watch them some days. I took them to work with me some days. Some days I just hoped, and maybe my wife didn't have to go to work that day and we made it work. And now that everyone is back, the teachers are having to make it work. They're doing so without an increase in resources. But if you look at this, the SOL test results, and this is not unique to Henry County, this is across Virginia, they have all gone, gone down. And it's no wonder, for two years, children had interrupted education. I don't wanna lay that at the foot of any educators, or on, that's not the board's responsibility, but the stark reality is that those children are going to have to make that up somehow, or we will have failed them. And so I would urge you, when it comes time to reconsider the school board's budget, that you would consider maybe moving us from the bottom 1% slightly higher. 
maybe to the bottom 10%, and it's a gradual improvement. And I know that realistically, we're never gonna be able to compete with Arlington. We're never gonna be able to compete with Loudoun County because this is Henry County. People here work a little harder. They have to save a little longer to buy that new car. But the reality is we need to invest in our children. So when it comes time, I'd ask that you do that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I saw the uh, gentleman uh, on us. Yes, sir, you. I saw you next. Good evening, all. My name is Salvatore Manastra, and I am a Vietnam combat veteran. I'm here today to ask the Board of Supervisors to pass a resolution to fly the POWMIA flag under all American flag that are flying in the whole county, the whole county buildings, to honor all veterans that never came home and who suffered in prisons, being tortured just to be free. I request that the POWMA flag be flown to honor the men and women that gave their full measure of devotion to keep this country free to honor the families of Henry County, who sacrifices their lives, their sons and daughters, for this county and state. Our flag is not a display to promote, the way I see it, McDonald's, uh, at sales companies or corporation. The flag is the people of the United States. That that are all united. Too many veterans have died for America. The only flag that belongs under the American flag is the POWMA flag. The men and women who died for that banner that's flying today. Thank you. Great, thank you. I saw, I saw several hands on the second row. Um, I'll start with the uh, lady in red. Good evening, Henry County Board of Supervisors. I am Joyce Staples, and I'm a proud citizen of the Blackberry District. Tonight, I want to talk about diversity in hiring. This is our moment. Allow me to start by sharing that this presentation is not meant as a personal attack on any individual. It is intended to put a spotlight on an inequitable and unjust structure currently in operation within Henry County. So I ask you to keep an open mind and receive this with the spirit that is given as a way to continue evolving and growing as a treasured community. I come to you on behalf of many leaders and concerned citizens and the African-American community. We want to convey our disappointment, not with the appointment of Mr. Wagner, but with the process that led to the appointment. There's a certain reputational risk associated with me speaking this evening, but because we strongly believe the process is flawed, we say enough is enough and choose to speak out. Most of us have been in the community for the last 20 years or so, and during that time, the position of county administrator has been open on three different occasions. Each time, it has been filled from within the organization by a white male with no announcements, job postings, or single advertisement. Now, leadership would argue they chose the best man for the job on each occasion, and that may be true. But with such a closed and secret process, how can they possibly know they hired the best person for the job? Why not validate the selection with a process that considers all applicants from outside the inner circle, including individuals with experiences from other areas, other cultures, and possibly consider someone with a different ethnicity or gender. This is our moment to be transparent. Our nation is in the midst of a national reckoning. At last, people have recognized that diversity of background begets diversity of thought, 
which makes for more dynamic and fruitful organizations. Diverse teams are 87% better at making decisions. Diverse management teams lead to 19% higher revenue. And gender diverse companies are 15% more likely to notice higher financial returns. As Americans, this is our moment to embrace the changes around us and to build a more inclusive environment for ourselves and for our children. We cannot simply abide by the status quo and allow those entrenched bias practices to continue. We have to face these hard truths about our own unconscious biases and actively work against the desire to lean into what's comfortable instead of what's doing what's right. This is our moment as a community to embrace what the rest of America has already started to recognize, that diversity is good for organizations. This is our moment to fight against the old systems no matter how uncomfortable change may be. This is our moment to develop more transparent hiring practices. So I'm challenging you, the Henry County Board of Supervisors, are you ready? Thank you. And I cut that down, it was like six minutes, so. <laughs> I cut it. I Yes, ma'am, I saw you next. First off, I'd like to say thank you for your service, sir. My father proudly served in the Korean conflict. My name is Lisa Eanes. I am a resident of Ridgeway. I also own property in the Blackberry District, and I am the Henry County Education Association president. I'm here today to talk about school funding. $5 million is supposed to be paid for school repairs and these repairs are desperately needed. The county needs to match the state's raise for school staff. If a locality fails to match these funds, the money could be lost. Where is the 2.5 million that was budgeted for schools and when will it be paid? Thank you for your time tonight. Is there anyone else wishing to address the board under matters presented by the public tonight? I'm looking around because uh, um, we have a number of folks here. Yes, sir. Since the gentleman brought it up concerning our veterans, if you recall last month, I raised the question about acknowledging uh, veterans, uh, in particular deceased veterans, and the naming of bridges, have that been given any thought? Because I haven't received any feedback on that. Was I supposed to get some feedback? Uh, I know you don't engage in conversation, but I'd like to know where we are with that process and uh, the bridge. So if Mr. Hall is designated to contact residents when questions arise, uh, I'd love to find out where we are. Thank you. Is there anyone else wishing to address the board tonight on the matters presented by the public? Okay, I see, see or do not hear anyone else uh, indicating such. Um, Mr. Hall, do you have any other items of business for the board's consideration tonight? Board members, do you have any other items of business? With that, I will accept a motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. Have a motion and second. All in favor is 6-0. Everyone have a good evening.